Hello, um, my name is Daniel Nichols. I'm homeschooled and I'm a junior in high school. And I want to start off by saying how excited I am to have the opportunity to speak with you guys today. I'm so excited about you Sunday to show that we as teens can be mature if we need to be. <laughs> in fact, maturity was a crucial component in preparing for today that I thought there'd be no, way, no better way to start off this message than describing a scene from a worldwide known classic show, SpongeBob. So in this scene in SpongeBob, there is an anchor that is stuck in the ground. Now many people have gathered around to watch SpongeBob try to remove this anchor from the sand. SpongeBob tries everything he can to remove this anchor, including the use of inflatable muscles. However, after many countless attempts of trying to remove this anchor, we end up with an unmoved anchor and, and a humiliated SpongeBob. No matter what SpongeBob tried to do, he could not remove this anchor. Therefore, what is our anchor? What, as Christians, allows us to be moved or unmoved? What is keeping us grounded? So I want to look at two different stories in the Bible. The first is in Genesis chapter 3, if you'd like to turn there. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, I mean, Genesis chapter 2, God puts Adam and Eve in the garden, and he gives them one rule. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, he says, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you should not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. In chapter 3, the serpent approaches Eve, and he, and he says to Eve in verse 1, he says, Did God actually say you should not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you should not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. Now, continue with the rest of the story. Adam and Eve give in to temptation, resulting in the fall of man and allowing sin to enter this world. Now, the second story we will look at is the temptation of Jesus found in Matthew chapter 4. Now, when this story had taken place, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. So, as you can imagine, Jesus was hungry. So, the, so the tempter, I'm going to start in verse 3 where it says, The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now later, Satan tempts Jesus a second time, telling Jesus to throw himself off the temple, and if he's really God, to allow the angels to catch him. But we see Jesus' reply in verse 7, saying, again, it is written, you should not put the Lord your God to the test. Finally, Satan tempts him a third time, saying that if Jesus were to bow down to Satan, that Satan would give Jesus, Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth. But in verse 10, Jesus replies and says, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Three separate times, Satan tries to tempt Jesus, but every single time, Jesus resists temptation. So what is the difference between our first story and our second story? What's the difference between a negative outcome, in Adam and Eve's case, and a positive outcome of Jesus? The difference is that Jesus was anchored by the word of God. In the first example, Satan twists God's word. Jesus, I mean, God told Adam and Eve that if they eat of the fruit, they will surely die. However, Satan told them that they will not die. He slightly twisted the word, and because Adam and Eve were not solid on the word, they were able to stumble. However, in Jesus' case, we see him tempted, tempted three separate times. Yet in every case, Jesus turned toward the word of God. Jesus resisted temptation because rather than ignoring the word of God, Jesus turned toward the word of God. Jesus' anchor was solely the word of God. So how does this apply to our lives? In this life, we are going to be tempted. The devil is going to try to throw everything he can at us to try and tempt us and to make us fall away from the will of God. However, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape. God is going to allow Satan to tempt us. He's going to allow Satan to try and shake us but he has provided the way of escape. The word of God is our way of escape. If we are anchored in the word of God, absolutely nothing, not even SpongeBob, can remove us from the will of God. Thank you.